So t- today I want to talk about blessings. How many want? To, how many like to be blessed? Okay, I just want to make sure you got to use those arms to get everybody moving again. Is there really? How many like to be blessed? I like to be blessed. So you are commanded to be blessed. The Lord has commanded you to be blessed. And what I'm going to take it a little step further, you are commanded to be a blessing to others. And that may be the purpose that we're here for, is to be a blessing to others. And so we honor him. Yeah, can you get an amen on that one? Yeah. I got to say, I got to go on worship. It seems to get better and better every time I come back. And so I don't know if she's learning more, if Karen's learning more. Or the, but the drums are awesome. The guitars, I mean, they all got, and uh, you try to go one Sunday without a worship team. You'll see how really great they are. <laughs> but it was really, really good. Boot. And so it makes my job easier. So we, uh, when we honor our God with our lives, we honor him by keeping him first place. Amen? So the scripture says in Deuteronomy 28.8, there's a couple of scriptures I'm sorry I didn't give you. Uh, the Lord will command the blessing upon you. How many believe a, a blessing has been commanded upon you? If you Actually, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, a commanded blessing has been upon you. Yeah, it's definitely upon you. That's fine. It reads, the Lord will command the blessing upon you in, in your storehouses, in all your undertakings. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. God will command His blessings to come on you. And when God commands something, it's not a maybe it will happen, right? It's not maybe it will happen. I hope it happens. If the circumstances come together, or uh, maybe, maybe it might happen. No, when God commands, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about what's going to happen. Amen? Okay. It's going to happen. When I was in the military, how many were in the military? All right, there's a few souls in front of that. Uh, when we uh, went through, we learned basic and uh, basic the meaning of authority because uh, we were uh, told what to do, when to do it, and not to ask any questions. Can I get an amen there? <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be picking up sticker butts or doing something for a long, long time without anybody else there. And so in the military, as uh, when an officer gave a command, there was no ifs, ands, or buts because we... Why was it the, the reason why we do that in the military? Because we respect the authority that they give to us because they have our best interest at hand. They want to do the best thing for us. They want us to see a success, and they want it as a group, as a group to see. And so God is just like that. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. If he gives you a command, he's blessing you to be in authority for him. It's just like the angels when they go. They receive a command, and they follow the command, and so they do the authority. Same thing when you receive Jesus Christ. God is giving you a command to go out and spread the news of, the, of, of His Word. Amen? It's, it's a big command, and some people receive it, and some people don't do it, and so that, that's just like... But God did not check this. Thing. So I think this is the key. is He doesn't check the circumstances to see if it's okay. He's, he, he's going to give you the circumstance if, 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 it's, if it's possible, if the command is... When he speaks, it's in a second. And you know how fast light comes in a second? 187,000 miles per second. That's how fast light comes. And when, for for example, darkness came on the world, and God said, let there be light, 187,000 in a second, light was on the earth. I mean, I, when I, this is the thing is that uh, recently I've been in a, I spent a lot of time in the hospital and everything because of my wife and her situation. And I'm just amazed at what God is doing to heal people. It's, you get a cut on your arm and you look in a couple of days, it's almost gone. And it's just it's so miraculous what God has done to heal people and to help them do that. So it's amazing. So you really see the, the power of the Lord working in people and walking with people and empowering people. So when God gives a command to be, to be blessed, He doesn't look to see what's going on with your family, where you are at work, or how much money you make. Really, he's not really that interested. He's interested in you and your family, but he's not really interested in those material things and stuff like that. He wants to see you bless others to be a blessing for him. And he'll remember that when you stand before the gates and you come before him. So you you see that. He wants you to be a blessing to others. Um. You know, I, I have that kind of personality. I like to talk to everybody. And, and unfortunately, I'm old school. I like to give people a little hug on the side. Now you got to be HR as well, you know. <laughs> Taboo, you can't touch somebody. <laughs> the angel's by the back there. 
my wife says, you can't touch people. I said, I, I just, I'm at church. I said, you'd be okay outside of the walls. Don't, don't, don't touch anybody because, you know. And, uh, and so it just, and it might, it's my way of showing the love of the Lord and just, you know, a touch, you know, and it, that's just who I am. And remember in the old days, we used to give a kiss on the cheek and a big hug. <laughs> it was, you know, it, that was the old, the old, old ways. But now we can give a, can't give a full, full on hug. You've got to give a side hug. You know, you've got to make sure you're good on that. But it's always my way, and this is, the, this is the thing. When I meet people I know, they look forward to that hug. They, I mean, there's no doubt about it. They look forward to that hug. And what it is, they know that it's my love given to them and the love that I have in Christ. Hey, amen? Hey, amen? You guys know? Do any huggers here? No. <laughs> I got a smile at them. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so many people tell you. So uh, with people that may tell you, you will never get well. So we have these two individuals. How many people have people that uh, you have a hard time? Uh, you love them, but they are kind of a little negative. Anybody like that? Anybody? You know, we won't mention family. <laughs> yeah, no family, but we, we, it's just it's just life. He's like, we're going to, once a year. We get together our family, and he's like, prepare for. <laughs> and the other thing is, is that. You always hear, they always say, well, how's your car? That was a year ago that my car broke down. So, yeah, and, you know, <laughs> it's, it's doing fine. That car is doing fine. But that's all they remember you for, though. I mean, that's all. Yeah. But, uh, but they'll say, you know, hey, you're never going to get well. They don't know the Lord. Uh, you're never going to meet the right person. And good luck with getting the money. I mean, they're like, why do I come around and why do I hang out with these people? <laughs> but every voice is saying to you, you know, you're stuck. Uh, and, you know, but there, and this is where we need to receive the commanded blessing from God. We have to listen to what we want to listen. And I, in, in my older age, I'm very, very selective what I listen to. I am very, very selective. Now, my wife is different. She can listen to anything and doesn't remember anything. If I watch a bad movie, I remember it. And I, I remember all night long. I remember the dreams. Oh, my God, I can't. I can't wait. She'll watch, you know, you know she's... she's the forensic files and everything, all that. So I'm like, oh, I can I mean, I have to close my eyes, close my ears. I don't want to. Go. Said, I said, did you dream about it? No, I didn't dream about anything about it. I said, well, I dream about that whole episode. He <laughs> just said, well, that's your problem. That's not. <laughs> so you know what I did? I ended up getting there the ear the, because we watch a little bit of TV in bed before we go to sleep, supposedly to wind down. But uh, I get her these earplugs that she can pl- plug into her phone, and she now can put them on, and everything's silent. <laughs> That's where I go to bed. We have to do it. But we receive the command, blessed from God. We, 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 we look at our own strength, our own experience, our own knowledge, and we can't see how it's going to happen. How many here have that? How many here say, I'm going through something uh, that I'm struggling with, and I really, really don't see a way out of this? When, when I was in the hospital, my wife had septic. Uh, I can tell you, that was, uh, and every other doctor every hour was coming to see her. And I knew it was pretty serious because usually you don't see the doctor at all. And they were out there. And so, and I, I Lord, I mean, I, I went and found anybody who could pray. And I would talk to anybody who could pray to see if you can actually pray for me because your prayer might be stronger than mine. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but no, I was like, any, anyone that could help. And so we had thousands of people calling. I mean, we talked about uh, Stu and his wife. Uh, Debbie was praying for us, and they sent out a message across to all Grace International uh, to pray for us and everything. And God is good because she's doing fine. How, as people are now asking, how is my wife doing? And I said, she's doing great. We have a great relationship. I, I asked that gentleman who had been married for 65 years. I said, well, how do, you, how do you stay married so long? He says, all I do is I say, my wife tells me something. I said, yes, and then I leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> and you are guaranteed to be married forever because you're not right. <laughs> So, so that's what I, I told my wife. He didn't laugh at it as much as I did. But I am, I'm using that practice, and we're very happily married right now. <laughs> so that's your marriage seminar for the weekend. You went to the marriage retreat. Just yes, and then leave the room, guys. Yeah, did it. Yeah. In your own strength. In your own strength. So we look for our strength, our own experience, our own knowledge, you know, what we can see, how it's going to happen. From our perspective, this is impossible. But God, but the thing, the good thing is, we serve a supernatural God. Do we? Yes. yes. There's no way we can see how it can happen. The healing, the finances, the the abundance. We cannot see how it's going to happen. And how many times in our life has? I don't know how it happened, but it happened. It ha- I mean, I mean, it's, 
It didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen, but it happened. It, it happened. Yes, sir. But the good thing, he's a supernatural God. He, his ways are not our ways. And this is the key. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to see you. Now, there are times, there are times that things happen to us and you say, why am I going through this? Why am I struggling through this? And I have looked through uh, in the past the things I've struggled through. And I think at the time I did not like it and I was glad to get out of it. But then after the dust settled and everything, I was a testimony for that. I was absolutely a testimony when somebody said something couldn't be done and I had gone through that. I was a testimony. You're, I hate to say you're wrong, but I went through something similar than that, and I came, we came through it, and we were blessed by it. And so it is not happy at the time, but we made it through of that situation. Okay. So, uh, so when he commands us, there's no question about the blessing, the impossibility, all the fortunes of God cannot stop him. He is a mighty God. And I, was, I love that in the worship today. It was just... I don't know what you fed her uh, last night, but it's, it's all stirred up inside of her. She's all fired up tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we, do we love that, though? Yay! <laughs> well, yeah. We may have sent her to the doctor again to see her. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> when you believe and receive the blessing from our Lord, you will uh, go places that you could never have gone before. Doors will open. Doors will open that you couldn't open. You will be promoted even, even though you were not qualified. You are healing when others will have given up hope. The commanded blessing, the authority of all who believe will provide good breaks for you that you never thought was possible. Contacts, opportunity, financial. You just, you just, you, you, I, I've been in life, I've been around a little while, and I say that again, but you, you're going through a financial struggle and everything, and you say, I just, I just, I got to, I trust in you, Lord, but I don't see where the finances are going to come through. I, I really don't see it. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't somebody actually gave us a deal, but they actually, somebody said something and said, you know, I can do that. I can do that. And so I started trying to do that, and all of a sudden, I've been started blessing, being blessed by that. And so that, that's what I'm talking about. You just don't know where it's going to come from. Uh, somebody will say, uh, we had, we uh, using a, a situation, I, we sold a dog to a, a doctor, and she kept on coming back to us and said, the, dog, the dog's ill, and you know, we're having a we take it to the vet, take it to the vet. And we said, let me ask you, if somebody came to you and had a problem in, in a situation, or you went to a doctor and they had a problem, and they kept on saying this and this and this, what would you do? She said, well, I'll get a second opinion. And I said, well, why don't you go and get a second opinion? And sure enough, she said, I am so grateful for you. That doctor in the vet was just actually milking me for money, knowing that I was a doctor, I had money. And Kevin, I the doctor, the vet, other doctor looked at the dog and said, this dog is perfect health. I don't know what you're talking about. And so, and so God works in mysterious ways, right? I mean, and we never know, but we want to look for the good in people. We want to look for the praise in people. We want to go ahead and present the opportunity to people. And if they receive it, great. If they don't receive it, you can pray for them, you know, in regards to that. So it opens up the door, new contact. We don't know where it's coming from. The favor will track you down with a new opportunity, possibility of belief. Now we need to believe in agreement with God. He, we can never have a quit attitude. I know and there's times that we want to give up. We want to go somewhere else. We want to do something different. And we go, what happens is, is that there's a huge void when you ever you do that. <laughs> because you don't know people, you're not a part of that group, and, they say, and you're trying to fit in. And there's a void. And so we need to know that we just need to make it where we're at. Can you get an amen? Yeah. And so can I tell you, this, it, 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 it makes a difference to know that. What matters most is that the Most High God likes you, like, likes you and wants to bless you. <laughs> can I get an amen? Raise your hands. Just keeping people awake and make sure you know, <laughs> I mean, he's so quiet. So, I mean, I it, so God is not limited by who, uh, who's against you. Why am I going through this? What, what am I doing wrong? No, all he needs to do is one touch of God's favor. How many have seen that? I mean, and, they, and, and you ask the person, yeah, one touch of God's favor, and you ask the person that actually has it, says, this, he or she says, I mean, all of a sudden, the blessings and receiving the, you know, the glory. And you have to be happy for those people. I mean, I mean, when somebody does good and you're there and you think, well, you know, I wish it was me and everything, be happy for them. Maybe it'll rub off it. But they'll say, if they'll be honest with you, what did you do? I said, I don't know. All of a sudden, this one person came by, and all of a sudden, you know, the situation happened. So uh, let me tell you a story. I probably a little ahead of myself, but uh, what happened was is that I have a friend of mine, and he has a, uh, he has a, a school, and so they have the, the school and everything. 
And they were short uh, the numbers they needed for the school. Can anybody relate to that? It was a private school, Christian school. They were short and everything. And you knew quite a few, and so they needed more students. So they all prayed and everything and all that situation. And then all of a sudden he got a call from this guy and he says, Hey, Pastor, can I talk to you? And he says, I'd like to talk to you personally, but I really don't want to talk to you, uh, tell you over the phone. And if you're a pastor and do a counseling or something like that, that's, that, those are the ones you've got to be <laughs> real careful for. You don't know where you're walking into. So, and so they got together and everything. He goes, I didn't want anybody to know this and everything, but I need, we lost our lease on the building that we had uh, for our school. It's a small uh, char- char- charter school and everything. And we need enough uh, uh, to, to house 43 individuals, children, and, I mean, for the school. And he said, and uh, we're willing to pay this and everything. We, I mean, the pastor, my friend, the pastor is about fell out of his chair. That, of course, he was praying for some resources to come. So all of a sudden, this this week, this Monday, 43 new students are going to show up at the campus and use the building. And they just happened to have two extra classrooms that were empty with storage that they were able to move out of it. So there was one place. Do you think he did anything special? He was praying and he was trusting the Lord that he would see provision and everything. And God is good, right? Yeah. It's a Christian school, so that's really nice and everything. And so nobody knows where that will lead down the road. But provision. And I look at us today. I look at where we're here today. You don't know what's going on around the valley, I mean, around this area and everything. And for some reason, somebody says, hey, we like heritage. We like the people over there. We're going to direct everybody from this church because we're not going to be able to afford to do it to heritage. And, and God is good, right? You know, no. And then we have to worry about you guys all fitting in here and standing outside. <laughs> you may not be receiving that. No, really. Yeah. But it is. It's God's favor and commandments and the way we, the way we process it. And, it and, and you are not working unto people. You're working unto the Lord. Proverbs 16.3 says, if it says, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. So are they always your plans? How many ways are there to get to New York? Many, many ways. Many, many ways. But you, once you get there, as it does, that's, that's, that's the end point. Now you have to figure out how to get back. <laughs> and when it's time to be promoted, you can rest assured you'll be promoted. People can't stop you. Bad breaks can't stop you. Injustice can't stop you. The command and blessing on your life will override every person that's trying to uh, hold you back. I have another story about a young man named Sebastian. So I, I could play golf. Anybody play golf? Any golfers? Anybody want to? Oh, no golfers here. Oh, my gosh. Dear Lord, do not take a moment now. <laughs> so I can tell you a golf story. It doesn't matter. You won't understand it anyway. So no, let me just go. Sebastian was, uh, when I met him, he was out there every day. When I was, uh, this is when I was uh, the golf coach. This is like four years ago. Die hard, love golf and everything. Well, what happened when he was 14, he was diagnosed with cancer. And all of a sudden, cancer. So he goes in the hospital. I talked to him a little bit about it and everything and stuff like that. And I kind of witnessed to him and everything. And he just kind of he talked about the Lord and everything. But he's real young. And uh, you've got to be careful when you're at that, that deal because you don't want him to go the wrong way. And then, uh, so I talked to him and everything. So he goes into the, uh, into the uh, hospital. He's there for a month. A month receiving treatment, and then so what happened was, is a year later, a year later, he uh, he, he was in remission. Can you name him? Say uh, yeah, yeah. So he was, uh, and so then all of a sudden he was starting to play, but he was like, his face was like swollen. I mean, uh, it was like my wife after she got out of surgery, her face was like swollen, uh, and then uh, uh, and then he was he was very very weak for all the, all those. But then he ended up playing. Uh, playing and getting healthy again and playing golf again and everything. And then uh, last last year, he went back into the hospital. I mean, he went back and found out he went back into he has cancer again. So I think he's uh, 15, 15. And so uh, he was in the hospital this time for 90 days. So him and I talked and everything. And he said, after our first conversation, what you said stuck with me, and I love the Lord and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. With another friend of mine, he was a golf pro, and everything, and says, you know, I'll go through this stuff, and um, I know it's for a purpose for me as a testimony to maybe others. I mean, he was like, I said, okay, man, you're pretty, this is pretty, pretty profound. <laughs> he says, but I'm going to make it through it. 
and everything. And so uh, what happened was is that uh, he came out of it for a second time. And this is the thing. The impact that he had going through this, there was a uh, Great Oaks High School, which is a huge high school, 4,500 students. But anyway, he has impacted that whole school on his recovery. And his testimony is that God helped me get through that. Well, do you think he could have ever made that, you know, hanging out at Walmart? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no. He made it because he loved the Lord, and other people saw his struggles, and they believe in God, and they saw him recover, and he's doing well now. Now, is God done with him? Maybe not. And we pray that he becomes a great evangelist, a great pastor from his struggles. That he can speak into individuals and stuff like that. But God used him in a mighty way, right? Amen. At age 13. And so we don't ever know. So he's a great, great kid. Great golfer, too. So, but we don't, so this is what I'm trying to say is that you may be going through struggles, relationships, or you may know somebody going through struggles, relationships, and God is, you don't understand, but he may be using it for a purpose to be a witness to others through the struggles. I know, and that's probably the worst thing you want to hear, but is that maybe, is that true in some people's life? Do you have, did anybody here have a testimony of something they've gone through a difficult time? Either a relationship or your kids' relationship, a family relationship, a financial difficulty. I mean, we use our kids all the time. <laughs> or our friends' kids. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> we, can, we can hear the stories all, all day long and use them as a witness. And really, yeah, let me tell you. But when they come through it, I mean, you're just like so happy for them. There's the, the praise, the praise be given to God. There's praise be given to God. And, and so, <laughs> but this is the key. When you have the commanded blessing, God will cause people to be good to you that they'll never, uh, that they've never had before. And they just will see people do the, do the, and God has the final say and the final commandment. Amen? Right? Especially before we die. Right before we die. Too, you know, really. It's a, People don't uh, determine your destiny. Uh, they didn't breathe life into you. They didn't call you. They didn't number your days. God did. Hey, amen. Hey, God did it. Amen. So there may be a situation that seems unfair. Don't worry. Time is coming. You, for you to either be one or two things. To be blessed or to be a testimony. So all of us hope for the blessing, right? <laughs> I'd rather be the blessing this time, Lord, than to be the testimony. But if that's your will... Well, your will be done. Your will be done. Because I'm all here. But, you know, we, it goes pretty fast. Can I get a name on that? When we get older, I mean, it's, it's moving right along. But, you know, we're in 2024 and with 2025. And when I was in the middle, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean and when you were in high school, just think of it and now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, it just goes quickly. And then, um, oh, this is the best part, though. My, my daughter, uh, uh, my, we have grandchildren. And the frustration, my... my my daughter, I have to laugh, we have a newborn, and she, uh, this is real close. We have five grandchildren, but my daughter's first one. <laughs> this is pretty comical. And uh, she, uh, she, see, I had to watch her. And so she was talking to her, my mom, her mom and everything, and when I was in the room and everything, she goes, you think Dad can be able to handle that? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> her mom looked at her and goes, she, he handled you, he handled your, your, your little brother, and he handled your sister. You're still here. I think you did okay. He says, "Well, I'm just worried you might not be." I said, "Honey, you don't need to worry about it. He he can handle it." And really, so yeah, really. So you never know. But I just have to laugh. You'll, you, the best part is to kick you about your grandchildren. How many have grandchildren? Yeah, some of them you love them, and some of them you love from afar. Really, I don't really. Yeah. But you know, there's a command blessing of your life, and it can't, it can't keep you down. You've been blessed, and you have a com- can't m- command blessing on your life. Can you get an amen? amen? You do. Don't give that up. Don't give that up. You own it. It's yours. And uh, it's, you can't keep it down. Even when you feel all circles against you, you feel afraid, worried, not in control. But I can tell you this. The Most High God is for you. He is for you. He is your cheerleader. He says, you know, and sometimes I tell you, I mean, this is when you wish you weren't really strong in the Lord. But sometimes when you go through difficulty because the Lord knows you can handle it. You can know you can handle it. You can come through it. And just because if you believe in Him. If you believe in Him. In Numbers 22, real quick, the Israelites were camped on the plains of Moab, Moab uh, headed to Jer- for Jericho. And even kings have problems. Do you think kings are afraid? 
Do you think, with the election, the election coming up, do you think a lot of people are afraid for all over, all over the board this time and everything? We're all over the board on this, and everybody's kind of wondering what's going to happen and everything. But what do we know? That we serve a mighty God. Whatever happens, we just keep moving. I mean, we have a way we want to go, but we just keep moving. We just, you know, we've had other elections. We've had ever difficulties. We've had ever, you know, crashes, financial difficulties. But we made it through, and we keep moving, right? Can I get an amen? I mean, whatever it is, it is. We just keep on moving. We have our one little boat, <laughs> the little dot, you know, <laughs> but we just keep moving, whatever it is. So the king, so the king of Moab, the Moabites, saw uh, uh, how many Israelites were out on the plains, and he was afraid the prophet Balaam always did what God asked him. What, what would you think a, a prophet of Balaam would be today? It would be a person, a woman, or a man? How many like Joyce Meyer? I just love Joyce Meyer. I mean, he's, he's old, she's older than me, but I just love... Or a man, a really man that you like, and you think if they, if they, if, if, if they were spoken to by God, that they're going to do it no matter what. Can you? Sue, Debbie, they're going to do it no matter what. They, they just believe that's what they're being told to. So the prophet Balaam always did what God asked. So the king sent some of the men to Balaam. With what did they usually send to try to get somebody to change their mind? Large amount of money. Large amount of money. So they sent a large amount of money, wanting Balaam to come and curse the people of Israel. This is. So he told the man that he would uh, think about it. <laughs> I thought that was really good. Now, let me just think about it. <laughs> we have all this money here. What do you get? The king ordered you, and you're going to think about it. And I'm going to think about it. He said to them, I can only say what God tells me to say. And then what did he do? He prayed about it. He prayed about it. When you talk about your two-state group and praying about it, that's a mighty power. That's the Spirit of the Lord moving through people. We can say one thing, but prayer is so much more powerful. Prayer is so much more powerful. And then verse 12, God spoke to Balaam and said, you're not to go back with them. And, and what I bless, you cannot curse. And that's what uh, was said to him. And here is an important, important. When God puts the command and blessing on you, it doesn't matter what somebody else says. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It doesn't matter what somebody else says. What they do or how they treat you. All that matters is that God put His blessing on you and everything else and ha- has no, that has an effect. That you can affect people in the mightiest way with a prayer, with a word of encouragement. Wherever you go, they, they'll listen. They look at you and they think He's, he's a, a friend. When, um, when I go back to my, and this is a blessing, this is a blessing which I really should never receive, but with my family, I'm one of six, and I'm the second youngest, so I know nothing as well, far as my brothers and sisters say, uh, and everything. But in our family, when we go to family, family gather, who do you think they ask to pray for the, for the blessing? Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm, I'm known as the pastor guy in the family and everything. And what a blessing is that? And when I was younger, they never thought I'd be, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I was just pounded. I was, I was a small one, you know. So then I grew up about four inches taller than everybody. Then I had a word, yeah. But it's but it's how people perceive you and look at you. Some people though won't accept you. I mean, that's just that's okay. That's okay. That's all right. And you just go forward. And what they say about you, and then if you don't want, if if you, if, if you don't allow it, and you do not receive it, it will not affect you. If you don't allow it, you do not receive it, it will not affect you. But if you receive it and you allow it to bother you, it will affect you. It will affect you. So you, you, got to, you have to control what is coming in, what you're doing, and what things are bombarding you. I've tried to tell this to my wife. It falls on deaf ears. <laughs> That's why I do real good now. Yes, honey, and I leave the room. <laughs> we'll be married for 70 years. Yeah, really, yeah. We have 33, but no, yeah, we're going. We're, we're, like, we're babies. I mean, yeah, babies in the womb. It's crazy. 65 years. Um, so it's been seen. It's not fair. So stay in faith, be blessed, and always um, and be on the alert for what is being um, sent to you or programmed to you. And the hope that, you know, it's, it's, it's just 
It just goes, uh, good, good things in. So he goes on to say that Balaam wouldn't come. He wouldn't come. He wasn't going to come no matter how much money they gave him. He wasn't going to come. And then he said, well, take, take the money to Balaam and take more money. Take more money to him and everything. And Balaam uh, knew the power of the Lord. He said, even if you give a palace full of silver and gold, I am powerless to do anything against the will of God. So, you have that spirit within you to be that powerful. And you may not look mighty at the time and everything with the people you're standing around you, but the power of the Lord is in you, and He can do a mighty work outside of you. Outside of you. Balaam said, I can only say, if I go, I can only say what the Lord tells me to say. But come anyways. Come anyways. And there's a lot of truth in that statement. Have you ever discussed with somebody and felt... Why am I wasting my time talking to this person? You know, <laughs> why am I talking to this person? And uh, they are so against me. But the proverb says, the, "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and but fools despise wisdom and instructions." People say one thing, but they they know you have the knowledge and the blessings of the Lord. So Balaam was said, uh, saying to the king, "I cannot curse what God has already blessed." And and this is an important thing. I think that we all have to understand that I'm just trying to have you avoid hardship and everything. If somebody's put into leadership, especially in, in biblical leadership and deal, don't be the one that curses that individual and talks bad about that person. I mean, don't, don't go even go there. Let somebody else do it. Let somebody else take on that burden. You know, you just go ahead and you can ignore them, but don't, don't go that direction. I'm just, I'm just saying with them because that can go badly quickly. For it. Not just to you, with you and them, but also in the Lord. The Lord doesn't like that he, the ones He's appointed into that leadership. He'll deal with them, and so it's not for you to judge them. Can I get an amen in there? That's a that's a hard one. That's a really hard one. Yeah. So people you, know, you work with and speak long. So it goes on. Balaam was here today. He would tell you your friends, your families, people you work with that speak wrongfully about you. I cannot curse. I cannot speak badly about them, uh, what God has already blessed. So God has already put a command of blessing on you. If he, somebody speaks badly to you, good luck. You're not dealing with me. You're dealing with the mighty one. <laughs> and he has a lot of power with a lot of other people that you don't even know. So, I mean, so he works in a mighty way. Amen? And that's where we don't ever know what's going to happen tomorrow or what's going to come our way. This is true for today. You cannot be cursed. There's a commanding blessing on your life. And we go through disappointing situations. Uh, where there, and, and we, but we have a new perspective where God is blessed, nothing can curse, and you understand this commandment. And now, let me see where we are. We, now that we have the forces that are trying to stop you, but we know they're, of course, can't stop you. They're, they're, they're powerless, and Balaam was supposed to curse the Israelites, was offered a lot of the money, but, only, but not only did he uh, not curse the Israelites, but God told him to what? Speak a blessing over them. Not to curse them, but to speak a blessing. And he was telling the Israelites, and how good and successful. And so that's always awesome when we can speak a blessing over people. Because they need that extra. They've been praying. So when you come together in a group and you pray together, you're praying from your, your might, your will, you know, your spirit. But when you actually have other people praying for you, they're joining in to what your beliefs are. And it makes it a powerful, more powerful statement. And in fact, when we come together, we pray together, we come to, together, for situations like this, God hears the mighty voices. He hears the voices in the room. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. So he's saying, we know that the forces are trying to stop you, but we know that the, every force that's trying to stop us is powerless to God. The blessing that God put on the lives. So Balaam, so offered a lot of money, but not only did he, he did he bless the um, he blessed the other life. Just telling you that how they're going to succeed and go further and accomplish the great goals. When they were in the planes, there was two million of them. So what they were worried about is that they're going to wipe, they're going to take every every animal, everything that's alive, and everything that's growing. They're going to take it. And so they, it just basically, when, whenever you see a major grouping move through a very, it's decimated. I mean, it's it's nothing left. Uh, and so that was one of the concerns. But what I'm telling you, this is what I'm telling you. You're going to succeed. Can I get an amen? How many? If you, those who are, want to succeed, raise your hand. Okay, there's a few of them. No. <laughs> you're going to go further than you can ever imagine if you believe that. If you believe it, you're going to accomplish great things. There's a spiritual purpose that God is showing us today. 
when people are telling you all the reasons why you can't eat get healthy, why you can't get it out, why you can't overcome the, the challenges, instead of agreeing with them, do like Balaam. God told me to speak health over you. I know that you don't believe that I'm going to get healthy, but I'm going to speak health over you. I'm going to speak financial abundance over you. I'm going to, I'm going to speak encouragement over you. And God, and, and what happens if you bless somebody and they don't receive it? What happens? Then accept it? It returns back to you. So, bless all day long. So, if any of you guys didn't want these blessings, I'll be glad to take them back. <laughs> I get a full load today. I'll walk out of here. Yeah. My pockets are full of blessings. They're kind of empty, flat, but they're, they're back. Because, yeah, it is true. If you bless somebody and they don't receive the blessing, God gives you the blessing back. That's it. See the enemy one. So, hey, bless the way. You know, I always look at it that way. You don't want it? Great. You handed out the bracelets and they didn't take them? All the power to me. I'm a happy person. I just received a blessing from you. Yeah, really. Amen. Amen. Can they get an amen? Just look at it that way. You know, he can't stop you. They can't stop you. He can try to convince you to go around things. You have reached your limit. You're not going to, you know, it's not going to happen. The work's not there. The finance is not, but you turned it around. You want to curse my future? I know better. I'm going to be blessed my future. You're never going to get out of that. No, you're wrong about that. Everything I touch will prosper. Everything I touch will prosper. I will succeed. I've been commanded to be blessed. I have a command that has been put on me to be blessed. And you saw the medical report. You're never going to get well. Uh, you couldn't. No, God has restored health back to me. The number of my days, He will fulfill to the whole. You have family problems. No thanks for me and my house will serve the Lord. The seed of the righteousness will prevail and be mighty in the land. And you have a lot of that is coming against you. Everything says that's not going to work out. But we, we remember God has commanded blessings on our lives and nobody can come against Him. Now I ask you, now I ask you, you may not see this coming. I never, I never saw the healing coming, the image, the imagination, the finance, the opportunity. Um, I, I had a, a situation. Uh, where I did something, and maybe I'll share it the next time, so I, I'm leaving you the hook next time it comes. I'll share what uh, I, I did that made me uh, a lot of money. Just put it out there. That's the hook. So you have to come back the next time for me to hear it. And I did very well. And the, the, the weirdest part about it was is that I had so many people trying to come to me to figure out what I did. And, and this is the thing. Um, there's two reasons. I, 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 I was hesitant to tell you. Two reasons, and I'll, and I'll leave. One, once you tell somebody you, you've made a lot of money, there's two ones. One, they want to borrow money from you. I told one friend, I said, one guy said, whatever you do, I'll tell you what I do, but don't tell anybody else. And he says, why is that? He says, you won't believe how many people want to come and borrow money from you. Not too funny. Two, I did a lot of work, a lot of training to get to be able to do that. What I do, and people want it that bad. And it doesn't work that way. And so, next time I come out, maybe I'll share that with you. <laughs> but it, it, it was the blessing of the Lord. Because you know what it was? I talked to one person, and I asked them what they were doing. And, said, and, and they, said, uh, they said what they were doing. And I said, I can do that. But I didn't know how to do that. And so I needed somebody to teach me. And then I ran into another person that was doing a similar thing. And he, he said, yeah, I did this. And I said, I can do that. And then I had to learn how to do that. And then I did it. And then it was successful. So what I'm saying is, is that you may not know where the financial blessing is coming from because you're not asking enough questions of others to find out what they're doing who are wealthy. I mean, they always tell you, hang out with a rich person and you'll find out what they do in regards to their success. And what happens is that you won't even be entertaining. You may be, if you got a quarter of it, you, you're good. But it just takes time to learn what they learn, right? When you get older, does it take long? I mean, when you when your work in your work experiences, your life, the new the new kid comes into the company and everything, and they want they, your job immediately. But they have no experience. They don't know how to do it. They don't know what they're doing. But one time they can success. And so that's what I'm telling you. You just don't know, but you need to give yourself an opportunity to to reach out and talk to people and find that out. Can I get an amen? Okay. Amen. So the so the abundance of prayer, the answers, the friends. I, mean, I never dream. This person would be so good to me. Never dream the success that I would have from talking to this person. These are the commandments and blessings you are receiving. You keep honoring God, and He will bring you the right people to you. 
uh, you did not expect, God will cause people to be good to you. If you it's, I always tell my kids, it's not what you know, it's who you know. If you knew, uh, I, I'll use just a name of it, Bill Gates, would your financial future be maybe a little better? Or if Bill liked you, then you think he might see if he can help you out. And he might tell you, okay, Kirk, do this, this, and this. And then get back to me and tell me how it went. And then do you think he wants to see you succeed? Yeah. People love to help people that want to be helped. One day you'll look at him and say, wow, I did not see that coming. It's because you have been commanded to be blessed. And here's the key. You have to change on the inside your thinking. You have to protect what you have coming in in order to be uh, effective in your, in your ministry before it can happen on the outside. And why don't we start that today? Get rid of all the negative things and start believing you are commanded to be a blessing, commanded to be healthy, commanded to be free. And you do this, I believe God will do all a wonderful work in your life. Can I get an amen?